This weekend marks 50 years since astronauts walked on the moon for the very first time, a milestone in space exploration. And our Carson Chambers spoke with two retired astronauts with ties to our Tampa Bay community as they reflect on this important moment in history and what it will take to break even more new ground in the final frontier. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. July 16th, 1969. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. Apollo 11 launches from the Cape. What an accomplishment and what an inspiration. Becoming the first manned spacecraft. That's one small step for man. Leap to land on the moon. I think it proves that we can when we really figure out, um, agree on, discover, resolve ourselves to a common kind of greater good goal and mission. We make it happen. NASA astronaut Nicole Stott is a Tampa Bay native. But I think Apollo 11 is uh, one of these things that happened in history that is all about the future, too. You know, everything that was done there uh, was about improving life on Earth, but also showing how we can do really complex things as human beings. Stott worked for NASA for 30 years, spent 15 as an astronaut with the space shuttle program, and lived 104 days in space, some aboard the International Space Station. Every career moment touched in some way by Apollo 11's legacy. What I think is so important about this anniversary is this celebration of exploration, but how it brings us back to Earth, to us understanding who and where we all are together in space on a planet. Stott flew two space shuttle missions, including the final flight of Discovery in 2011, a launch I witnessed firsthand from Cape Canaveral. To me, there are just three simple lessons that come from it. And it's that we live on a planet, we're all Earthlings, and the only border that matters is that thin blue line of atmosphere that blankets us all. And over in Newport Ritchie. We were the class of 87, and of course you have the infinity sign here. Former astronaut Bruce Melnick is also reminiscing on the lunar landing anniversary. We've shown how we can fly to low Earth orbit. We've shown how we can fly to the moon. But, you know, we're kind of like where, you know, Lindbergh was when he crossed the Atlantic as far as space flight's concerned. I mean, what's the next giant leap we have to take to get beyond the moon. Melnick tells me Apollo 11's 50th is bittersweet for him. You know, I feel like we should be much further down the road, maybe to Mars. Melnick believes we'll only reach the next level of space travel through the invention of a new mode of propulsion. That's the hard part is that next breakthrough of how you're going to get to space to where you're not controlling an explosion and it's so hazardous. I mean, it's, it's dangerous. Dangerous now, dangerous back then. Still a calculated risk, lifting space innovation and American ingenuity to a new spectacular level. Now we're talking about going back to the moon and establishing a permanent presence there. And the Apollo guys that are still around, they are so excited about this because they see it as like this extension of what they started. I think they see it as a way for us to leverage it for the future. Carson Chambers, ABC Action News. And thank you. And we've got those details on how to celebrate the moon landing this weekend, plus archive video from the Apollo 11 mission. All of that is posted to this special section of our website. Just go to abcactionnews.com slash Apollo.